Hi everyone, what's up? It's Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. Today we've got portable handheld espresso makers going head to head with the Lever Presso versus the Nano Presso with its barista kit. Now this brings it neck and neck to the brewing capacity of the Lever Presso, jumping straight in there with our first comparison. The standard Nano Presso only holds a maximum of eight grams of coffee to 70 mils of water, whereas the Lever Presso standard holds a maximum of 20 grams of coffee with a similar amount of water. So to make this a fair comparison, I have employed the Barista Kit with the Nano Presso, which increases its size capacity to squeeze out more coffee so you can get a much more concentrated shot out of it. And speaking about getting the most out of something, right now I need you to smash that like button as it does help with the YouTube algorithm and we'd really appreciate it. So with that, thanks very much, and let's get back to the video. So as a handheld espresso maker goes, these are considered the most portable options for both being super lightweight compact brewers. The Lever Presso does have a few more metal parts, making it a little bit heavier, but perhaps more durable as well. And especially that brew basket, which looks, feels, and brews very similar to a regular espresso basket. Whilst the Nano Presso, on the other hand, is made completely from resilient food grade plastic. Now, I can assure you it won't break if accidentally dropped. I can attest to this. And the main difference in these brewers is the way they actually perform their extractions. The Lever Presso, using those folded levers to move the plunger up and down in the water chamber. So with this chamber filled, you press the levers to force the water through the bed of coffee and out the basket the other side. Whereas the Nano Presso uses an internal pump with a piston that pops neatly out the side of the unit. And as you pump the piston, it's gonna take water from the water chamber above and then in through the pressure chamber in the middle and then expel it through the bed of coffee under pressure the other side, exiting through the pressurized filter basket at the end. Now this is and isn't a big win for the Nano Presso. See, the pressurized porter filter is quite forgiving on your grind quality. To the extent you will be able to pretty well add any ground coffee into its basket and then brew an espresso-like coffee. Whereas with the Lever Presso, with such a large brew basket, it is going to act more like a fussy espresso machine. And you're going to have your moments where you'll need to dial your coffee in, which translates to getting that grind size just right in order for you to brew something that looks great and also tastes delicious. Now this of course is in that scenario as a portable brewer. So I'm imagining you're in the middle of nowhere and unless you've got a keen barista IQ or you've dialed your Lever Presso in prior to leaving, then the Nano Presso does have its benefits as a pressurized brewer where you're able to brew coffee in a way that removes some error and you're still able to build some pressure from it regardless of the quality of your grinder or the beans that you're using. However, I'm still trying my best to keep this as a level playing field. So I do know you can remove the spring from the Nano Presso's filter basket. And when you do this, it basically reverts the Nano Presso to a non-pressurized unit where you'll rely a little bit more heavily on the grind size in order to build pressure through the bed of coffee, much like the Lever Presso. And now this way, we're brewing as close as possible in comparison. And with a quick look at the accessories before we begin brewing, thankfully both the Lever Presso and the Nano Presso are tailored for traveling and they keep these to a bare minimum. There's similar parts like the screw on cup to brew into. They also both have a tool that acts as a dosing and tamping tool. And this packs away cleanly into each brewer so there's nothing really in the way of extra weight or loose items to manage whilst you're traveling. So to begin brewing, I'm going to add the same amount of coffee to each of the brewers of 15 grams. And it's gonna be ground fine enough to make a decent coffee from both. Now, even with the Nano Presso spring removed, those grinds are slightly more coarse than the Lever Pressos. So if you do have a hand grinder that's more focused towards filter brewing and not espresso, then the Nano Presso is the brewer you'll want to pair it with. Whereas the Lever Presso, you'll want an espresso capable grinder to really get the best out of it. And through this extraction, I'm gonna be aiming for a 35 to 40 mil shot out. The Nano Presso does seem to soak up a little bit more water here so adding some extra water in the water chamber is key to get the ratio right. 
Now, in my own experiences, I haven't discovered there to be a good reason for preheating either of these units. I mean, you certainly can, but since they're both predominantly made from plastic, their heat capacities are as such, you will use a lot of hot water to get them up to a temperature that wouldn't necessarily contribute to the bruise quality significantly over the time and the energy it took to bring them up to temperature. But even with a good preheat, the Levopresso does brew hotter coffee on average compared to the Nanopresso. And with that aside, I recommend using boiling water with both of these brewers, and at least that way, you do stand a chance for the water being as hot as possible throughout the extraction. And of course, begin that extraction as soon as possible. Now earlier, I had mentioned the brewers have their own cups for brewing straight into. And initially, I was not a big fan of these at all, but especially with the Levopresso, it is decisive on how stable it makes the brewer whilst using it. To actually press down on those levers whilst brewing is a little awkward and takes some effort. So if you're balancing it over a cup, it's quite hard. Whereas with the cup on it, you can press it down on the bench quite reliably. Now, you can also get the stand for the Levopresso. It is an extra thing to carry, although it does make a great addition if you are also considering the Levopresso to be used regularly at home. Though I do find the Nanopresso is a little easier to aim into the cup and then pump the handle at the same time with one hand. So brewing into the attached cup is great, but also aiming into your favorite espresso cup is quite simple in avoiding any unwanted spills. Which brings me to the quality and the taste of the coffee itself. Now, if all things being equal, then the coffee has been extracted well from both brewers. Cheers. I definitely taste, there's a lot of depth in that Levopresso coffee there. There's sweetness, there's body texture, and there's some aftertaste. It has, it has the taste of a good extraction. And the Nanopresso, again, it's a little bit cool, although that's very enjoyable. It's slightly thinner, and then certainly on more than one occasion, I've found the bruise on the Nanopresso to lean towards being slightly under extracted with a little bit more sourness than I prefer but this one is actually quite good and close to that of the Levopresso. Now, I guess taking a look at all the parameters, I could definitely play with more of them, although I am pretty well maxed out on the Nanopresso for the grind that I used and certainly the dose. Whilst I could still be adding an extra five grams of coffee with the Levopresso and even an extra 20 mils of water and easily be brewing something more like a double espresso on the Levopresso. And taking a look at the cleanup and perhaps the turnaround from each brewer, I do find the Levopresso occasionally has a little bit of water left over in that water chamber, which if you haven't pressed down all the way, it can make a soggy mess of that basket to empty out. Though if you have pressed out all that water, then there is quite a dry puck that's easy to knock out. You can give this a wipe and you're good to go again. And the Nanopresso is a little bit easier getting all that water through effortlessly. The basket on the Nanopresso, with one good knock, you can remove that puck quite easily, rinsing everything off to go again. The turnaround, I guess, on each of these brewers is pretty well straightforward, and I wouldn't necessarily say that one is more efficient than the other at preparing another shot. Although the Nanopresso does come with extra filter baskets in the barista kit, so you can have a few baskets preloaded and just have to fill the water chamber to go again. And there is more to be said for the Nanopresso. For example, it does come in loads of different colors, each with their own carry case. There's those extra items you can purchase separately too, like the barista kit or the Nespresso pods attachment. That'll turn the Nanopresso into a portable handheld Nespresso brewer, which in turn, whilst not the most sustainable of options, does make for a much easier, cleaner brew routine whilst you're traveling. And especially if, I guess, if you don't mind drinking Nespresso pods. As well, there is the thermos mug that will attach to the Nanopresso and extend the capacity of the hot water you can carry. Now, as mentioned earlier, the Levopresso, you can purchase the brew stand separately, and there's also a pressurized portafilter basket if dialing in coffee isn't all that you want. 
as pressurized porter filters are very convenient if you're out and about or you don't have the best grinder or just prefer pre-ground coffee to brew with. So this does lead me to the conclusion of which is my preferred portable espresso brewer. And I would have to say, it's the Lever Presso, but only marginally as a higher quality brewer for better tasting coffee. And it does in fact make a great reliable brewer for the home as well. Whereas I do find the Nano Presso at the very beginning, having to add the barista kit and then remove that spring did lose some parity alongside the Lever Presso. But even with the barista kit, it just lacks a little bit of sophistication in the taste of the coffee that it brews consistently. And although it does check some massive boxes for ease of brewing, it's cleaning and it's affordability, plus all those extras that are available, I think for that small amount extra you pay for the Lever Presso as a standard, so long as you are prepared to work a little bit more for that quality output, you are going to brew some incredible tasting espresso like coffee with the Lever Presso, whether you're at home or anywhere else. So if you have any questions regarding the Lever Presso or the Nano Presso, throw them in the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. If you feel like I've missed out on something or would like to add your own experiences with using either of these brewers, we'd like to hear from you. And then don't forget to subscribe and stay notified as we bring out new videos just like this every week. So hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. We'll see you next time.